Okay, uh, the first four chords of All the Things You Are. Okay, so that's just uh, one approach that I'll sometimes take, and I'll break that down for you. Uh, the first chord that I played, uh, the prevailing key here is A flat major, okay, for the majority of uh, all the things you are. But it begins on the sixth chord, okay, that's a little bit unusual in jazz, it begins on a sixth chord, okay. Now normally the way that I would voice this is with a A form voicing, because it would be rootless and there would be the six, the uh, root of the chord be, would normally be provided by the bass player, okay. But because uh, that voicing encroaches into the territory of this little uh, motif that I'm about to teach you, I decided to just play a regular old root position voicing. If you didn't want to play a root position voicing, you could raise the root of that a whole step and have the ninth in the bass, that would also work, or just leave it out altogether and just play an A flat major triad upper structure of the F minor triad, as long as there's perceiving that F down there, okay? You're gonna need a bass player for that, or do something like, you know, one of those, okay? So I just assume just play it right here. Now the lick sounds like this. Okay, basically, okay? So uh, let me break it down for you exactly what I'm doing. Uh, once again, F minor triad. Uh, not a jazz voicing, that's just root position, okay? But I am beginning the lick uh, uh, just above the top note of this voicing on the major ninth of the chord, okay? So that extension, uh, starting off the lick, completes the harmony. I always think of uh, a melody as a linear expression of harmony anyway, so as soon as I do that, we are now hearing, arguably, a jazz chord. Maybe not a jazz voicing, but a jazz chord, okay? It would only be that anyway. That would be the only difference uh, if I were just playing the full voicing. But I'm treating this as a melody note, okay? So one of the things I like to do anytime I'm faced with a disembodied kind of minor chord in a, in a tonal piece that isn't two uh, and also isn't Phrygian, okay? That's another important point, okay? Because I treat Phrygian chords completely differently. But uh, uh, we start on a six chord here and uh, it's minor. Whenever I have the opportunity with a minor chord, I like to take that opportunity to inflect an altered minor scale, such as either uh, melodic or harmonic minor. And by melodic minor, I mean the ascending melodic minor, or what's also known as jazz minor, okay? So when I begin this lick, um, I rest for the first eighth note, the first swung eighth note, and then I come in. Uh, uh, I don't do it as a strict triplet, though. I do it as more like a, like a swung triplet. That's more of like a jazz articulation. Then I'm going to climb up diatonically until I reach the 11th of the next chord. The next chord in the progression is B flat minor. Now, I am playing a rootless voicing in this case, so I hope that you can imagine that B flat uh, root of the chord down there, okay? So. That's just the bebop lick, okay? It sets me up, because the bebop, the bebop lick starts on the 11th of the two chord anyway, all right? And that's what the first part gets me to. Bebop lick. Staying on the two chord the whole time. Don't make the mistake of resolving to the five chord yet, okay? Three, four, okay? You have to fill up that measure, okay? Now, what did I do there, okay? When I did the bebop lick and I ended on the note B flat, okay? Uh, well, that's the least interesting pitch I could occupy. I don't want to be on there for very long, so I'm going to descend uh, by doing a chromatic approach tone enclosure for my next target note. My next target note, of course, is going to be the third of the dominant chord that follows, uh, E-flat dominant. 
I am playing a rootless jazz voicing there, okay? So we're talking root position about this chord. Okay? But I'm talking about that jazz voicing. And hopefully you know that uh, when playing any type of dominant voicing, altered or not, okay, it doesn't matter which, which type of alteration uh, that you're using, uh, a very common mannerism is to proceed from the third of the dominant chord, either down or up, uh, to the third of the tonic chord. Uh, so uh, 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 in this case, I can't go down because it's too close to the voicing. It's closer to the, the, the tonic voicing that I want. So now I'm on the third of E flat, okay? And then, uh, excuse me, I misspoke earlier. So I'm on the third of E flat going up to the third, up to the third of uh, my target tone, which is what I'm aiming for when I resolve to this A flat major chord, okay? Um, while I'm occupying the dominant chord, it's a very dissonant note by itself, However, that is the flat nine alteration, and that is perfectly acceptable. If your ears object to, uh, to object to that sound, just substitute the jazz voicing for E flat dominant, the uh, A flat, uh, excuse me, the A form E flat dominant voicing. Just play a G diminished seventh chord instead. That's that's the upper structure of uh, E flat altered dominant anyway, or it's one of the possible upper structures of E flat dominant anyway, and uh, it already contains the flat nine alteration. So you don't have to worry about like harmonic conflicts at all. You might prefer that more open sound, okay? What I'm doing there at the end is a, a thing that uh, Vince Guaraldi used to do and Ellis Marsalis occasionally. Uh, which is a, a very cool uh, trick, which is when you end on the tonic chord, uh, such as, let's say, C major 7th or C major 9th. I'll play a jazz voicing for it. Uh, C on the bottom by a bass player. Very nice thing to do is to leave a lot of uh, space by just using the median minor pentatonic of the prevailing key. So if I'm in the key of C major, gives a nice open sound over the tonic chord. Also compatible with the magic lick, and if I think of this B minor chord out of the magic lick, coming from the fifth of that first minor lower stru uh, upper structure triad, E minor, I can then also continue uh, some tonic chord phrasing. Uh, with that sharp eleventh, making it more of a more of like a Lydian tonic. Okay, so uh, all of those things are possible. Or you can just keep up the magic lick forever for major or minor chords. Okay, that's enough for now. Hope you liked it. Bye.